All right, good morning. Today we're looking at a new ship design. As you can see, we've got a uh, new Class B ship here. It's got these landing gears from uh, Hope Tech that I've never used before that I've been uh, wanting to play with for a while. I uh, saw a ship on Reddit that kind of inspired me to build this, and I'll link a, or put a link to it in the description so you can take a look at it. But uh, I kind of changed it up. I, it was a Class A ship. I made this a Class B. But I left the engines as Class A just to give me the extra speed. And uh, But I wanted it to be Class B so I could get the more powerful shield and the better weapons. But uh, the, uh, these uh, landing gears are massive. and uh, But I think it came out looking pretty cool. And uh, we'll get down to the ship builder. I'll take it apart, show you its stats, and uh, we'll take it for a spin and see how it performs in combat. Alright, we're down here in the ship builder. I'm calling this one the Crate, which is a type of snake. And uh, you see I've got these giant Hope 55 landing gears. I've got four of them on there. It doesn't actually need four landing gears, but uh, I like the symmetrical look of the way this uh, came out. Cargo is only 1360. I finally got it up to eight crew members. That was a little bit of a hassle. 30 light year jump range, 100 mobility. And as I said, I left the engines as Class C engines. I used two of these White Dwarf 3030s. Actually, why am I using 3030s? Shouldn't it be 3015s? Oh, no, that's right, because they had just a little bit of extra engine thrust. And because I'm mixing and matching with these White Dwarf 1020s, I, I didn't get the 180 speed, so yeah, that's right. So anyways, these are all... I used two of these White Dwarf 3030s and two of these White Dwarf 1020 engines. And uh, I generally don't mix and match engine types, but you know, I was just going to do three of these White Dwarf engines like down the, the line here, but I found that you can't actually connect the gears to anything. There's no, there's no uh, attach points on the side of these motors. So I put the Class 4, or excuse me, Class A grab drive right there, and that way I can attach the gear. And then I had some space up here at the end, and uh, it was just a perfect fit because these uh, landing gears rotate 90 degrees, so these thrusters at the top are actually pointing forward in space flight, and it's just enough room to fit these motors right there, you know, without having to resort to glitching, which I don't do. So this is just a vanilla build. But uh, anyways, yeah. So the top speed came out to 150. The mass, one, uh, 944, which is the max before the mobility would drop down to 99. So if I was to add one more ton, mobility 99. But we want to keep the mobility at 100. So, uh, like I said, I'm happy with the way this came out. Uh, originally, I was using some Class A weapons. I had originally built this as a Class A ship. And I ran into some problems with crew members. I couldn't get it up to eight because there's a limited number of uh, hard points for the weapons. And when you use like one ton weapons, excuse me, for the uh, to max, even though all the weapons were maxed out, they were class A weapons and they were uh, four power weapons. So there's only three uh, weapons in each group. It's not enough weapons to get your crew up to eight, which is, it sounds stupid because I have two control stations with four crew members each plus the, the cockpit which should give you 10 right but the weapons it doesn't matter how many crew members uh, crew stations you have if the weapons don't if, I mean if you don't max them out high enough they you can't get up to eight crew members no matter what you do it's a stupid design I don't know why Bethesda did it like that and uh, they really should just take that out of the game like if you take out yeah, see, it just took out, just taking off weapons. Now the crew member went to seven, even though I still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten crew stations in the ship. Seven crew members. It's stupid design. I don't know why they do that, and I don't like it. I wish they did remove it. So these uh, white uh, vaporizers are only Free Star Collective weapons. You can get them from any of the Free Star ports, like Neon, Cheyenne, and Polo, or Polvo. On uh, what's it? Hope, yeah, Hope Town. But uh, 
I've never used this cockpit, I don't think, in any ship before, this Armstrong 1020E. But uh, anyways, the only complaint I have with the ship is uh, it doesn't have a super high amount of cargo, but eh, whatever. 1360 is the size I could get it without going over my mass limit. Anyways, uh, give me a second, I'll take this thing apart, I'll show you how it goes together, and then uh, we'll take it out for a spin. Alright, I've got this thing disassembled. It's a pretty simple ship, there's not a whole lot of parts to it. Start off with a Deimos all-in-one berth, 2x1. Right on in front of that is going to be a ship bed 200 from Tayo. Snap on just like that. That's basically the foundation for deck one. For deck two, we're going to start with this mag inertial uh, 104DS. And then uh, in front of that, we're going to use a Deimos control station, two by one. So that's one. Oh, I'm sorry, this is an all in one berth at the bottom. Yeah, and then the control station here, and then another control station. That's right. Because I wanted to have a bed in there. So if I uh, wanted to use the, the bed, I could get my experience buff. And then the Armstrong 20E cockpit. We'll hook up just like that. That's basically deck two. And then deck three, we'll start off with this Deimos Cowling 4. It goes on just like that. And then the top is a Deimos Control Station 2x1. That's the, uh, the bulk of the interior of the ship right there. In the back behind this reactor, we're going to hook up our R400, excuse me, 4000 Alpha Grav Drive. Just like that. Above it, we're going to put one White Dwarf 3030 engine. Below it, we're going to put a White Dwarf 3030 engine, just like that. Kind of sandwich that uh, Alpha Grav Drive in between there. Up here on the uh, back left of the control station, we're going to hook up our first White Dwarf 1020 engine. And on the right side, we're going to do the same thing with the second White Dwarf 1020 engine, just like that. For cargo, we're using two of these 400 CM ballast cargo holds. We're going to hook them up just like that. And below the cargo holds, we're going to hook up our fuel tanks. And on this side, it's a Titan 550 HE3 tank. And on the right side, a Titan 450 HE3 fuel tank. And that gives us, what is that, 270? Yeah, and I think I calculated, actually I'm not sure what I calculated, I'll have to, we'll have to do some checks. It, it's, it should be right at the edge of what I, uh, the maximum that I needed. Behind the grav drive, we had some extra space here, and uh, I needed to add some more cargo, so I put this 100 cm ballast cargo hold, just like that. And then for the gears, we're using these Monster Hope 55 from Hope Tech. We're going to put four of them on here. I didn't realize it at first, but these things rotate. So right now they're sticking straight up, and these little holes up here are actually facing forward in space light. So when you fire your thrusters, these things are uh, shooting out fire, but they shoot them out this way. So it's uh, kind of cool. And then the gears actually retract up into the thing and they kind of just fold 90 degrees forward. For our shield generator we're using a Vanguard Bulwark. I'll stick it right there. And I forgot to mention, uh, I forgot to take it off. For the bottom we're using this 100 DP Slim Docker and then, of course if you didn't know the slim ones can be flipped up or flipped down and we want it to be facing down. <coughs> You know what? I messed up. That should be right there. Sorry. Forgot how my own ship goes together. So these uh, two gears needed to be one spot back. Alright, now on the top, I decided to uh, add a little bit of aesthetics here and I added a tail. I think it came out looking pretty nice. And then as far as weapons goes, I wanted to use the most powerful 
B class weapons I could find. And these, uh, and it had to be three power, or excuse me, four power weapons, because I'm limited to how many hard points I have for weapons. So two of my groups, weapon groups, have four power weapons, which means there's three group, uh, weapons in each group. And then the last group, I was able to get four weapons, and that's the PBO 175s. So for the first weapon groups, I used a, a three exterminator 95 mega electron volt auto helion beams. And then group two was three vaporizer 35 mega electron volt auto proton beams. And this is actually an A-class weapon. And then group three is a PBO 175 and there's four of these. That's a B-class weapon. And I found we can put two of those there and originally I was trying to put and see these are both B-class weapons so you'd think well that fit down here right so this one would fit down here but it doesn't I don't know why I guess it's this little piece out here that sticks out but it, it, it couldn't cram it in here but I was able to figure it out I'll put it on the top and because these don't have that little piece sticking out they, they slot in there just with enough room to fit. And of course I'm using these uh, Horizon Weapons mounts to put all these guns on. It's the same thing. Now here's a thing that's weird. That gun doesn't fit here. It's red, right? It does fit on this side, but not this side. It's just one of those weird quirks of the game. I don't know why, but whatever. These uh, straight or these uh, square ones fit pretty nicely in there, so whatever, I'm happy with that. And then these last spots here. And you got a little unused uh, slots here at the bottom of this uh, Horizon Weapons mount, but nothing will fit in there. Like the guns are just too big to uh, go in. They're just like, see how they clip into the ones below them? Even A-class weapons won't fit under there. But it doesn't matter. So I got one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten guns total. All my weapons groups are maxed out. Engines, shields are good. And uh, I think I have, like I said, I think I have enough fuel. I might do a quick test on that to make sure I have enough. I'll have to kick Sarah off because uh, I don't use Sarah when I'm doing my fuel calculations because I, I don't always have her on the ship and I don't want to rely on having uh, her to, you know, make uh, grab jumps. Anyways, like I said, it's a pretty uh, different look to the ships I usually design. You know, I'm known for using those uh, Nova Galactic uh, braking thrusters and uh, more uh, aerodynamic looking ships and then having like massive cargo amounts. But uh, I was trying to just do something different this time. And uh, like I said, I saw a... Uh, picture of a guy that, or his ship on reddit that uh, kind of inspired me I mean it, I've kind of changed it up pretty significantly but it was the basis of the idea when I started and uh, this is what I came out with and I, like I said I'll post a link in my description to that uh, reddit post so you can see where I started to and then where I ended up with with this design but I'm happy with it uh, you know after some tinkering everything uh, finally came together as usual you know, I'll always run into problems, and uh, it's just a matter of uh, keep plugging away at it until you figure something out. So that's the crate. What else do I have? I've been trying different things. Because, you know, most of my ships end up looking kind of like this one. I, you know, I have my uh, braking thrusters on the front very uh, very plain looking ships that don't have a lot of uh, you know trim pieces like radiators and and uh, structural pieces sticking out everywhere but we'll see so this is the ship like I said these landing gears are huge they're four thrust each which makes them on par with the, the most powerful of the Nova Galactic NG20s. Uh, four is the highest that any uh, landing gear can go in this game.
like I said, the engines came out. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to fit those motors on the back, up there in the back corners. But uh, it did fit in there, I mean, just barely. And I'll show you when we get in the space. When these uh, gears rotate, there's like a millimeter of space in between this part right here and the top of the engine. But it works, and I didn't have to glitch anything, and that makes me very happy. There's three 2 by one halves total. So we have uh, four bunks down here. There's the bathroom. Hey, Captain. Need help with anything? So tempting. These are the cleanest bathrooms. These uh, Demos uh, all-in-one halves. There's a little stove over here. Sink. I'm listening. And then if your docker at the bottom comes up here, and it's just one ladder that goes all the way to the top of the ship. So, much better than Dad's. so if you come up to the second deck. This is a control station where the crew would work, and this takes you into the cockpit. And if we go up to deck three, it's another control station where more crew members can work. It's a little confusing because this one faces forward, and uh, so the two, the bottom one and the top one go back, but this middle one goes forward to the cockpit. <coughs> oh, you know what? Before I take off, I'm going to kick Sarah off the ship. We'll go to crew, ship. I have Andresia, Barrett, Samco, and Sarah Morgan. Those are the big uh, four. I'm not using Omari or Vasco. Uh, because I'm having trouble with that shield bug affecting all my ships, so I'm not allowing anybody that would uh, modify my shields or power onto the ship. We're going to see if that... Uh, I haven't had the shield bug yet, so maybe I'll get lucky. Let's see, I don't want to... I want to remove her. Assign. Okay, there we go. All right. Let's just take off. We'll get in the orbit. Ship's good. Buckle up and let's go. It kind of looks like a funky uh, frontier. I like how those uh, gears rotate. I didn't really realize that when I uh, first started building this thing. Apogee complete. We're in orbit. And let me balance out my power settings. Oops. If we go to our uh, stats, I have the payloads buff, so that gives me, uh, and I have Samco on board. Excuse me, and that gives me 2,356 cargo. Shield power is at 2,320, which is what uh, we should expect because I have the shield uh, skills as well. And uh, we have some of the best uh, Class B weapons. <coughs> I do have some Class A weapons on there. That, uh, but I'm happy with the way they came out. I'm, I just needed something that would fit in there. Let's go over to uh, Eridani. We'll do a quick fuel test since I've got Sarah off the ship now. This is generally how I test how much fuel I need. I'll just jump to Eridani and then see how far or how long or how much fuel I need to jump to, uh, I think it's Boar or something all the way over on the uh, right side of the map. What the? Is that that star? Uh, yeah. All right, so we're at Eridani. I haven't explored all this stuff yet, but uh, we can still see how much fuel it takes. So it takes 270 fuel total. 
excuse me, we have 270 fuel, and uh, the farthest jumps will need 225. So I actually might be able to reduce the fuel. I'll have to play with that later. I might be able to save a few tons or a few kilograms of fuel. But uh, we're over the minimum, uh, the, you know, the the most that we need. So. And of course we're lagging out again. Let's go over to the Serpentis system. We'll see if we can uh, take it into combat. So class B ships are really the sweet spot for combat. You can do this in class A, but you got to be uh, you got to be a lot more careful. You got to like thrust around a lot more and uh, try to dodge. But it's not impossible. This is NG plus ten, and of course I'm on very hard difficulty. Now I did test this earlier with uh, a class A design, and I, like I said, it works fine. But I did get killed a couple times. I mean, uh, sometimes they just get behind you and uh, you don't even have a chance to do anything. Your shields are just too weak. Is there any uh, hostile activity areas? Sensor, what is that? Sensor, I guess not. <laughs> you know me so well, Dad. As some of you guys play uh, in uh, 3D mode when you're in combat. I don't know how you guys do that. I get like disorientated like constantly when I'm doing that. Anyway, so this is pretty easy. Let me uh, get faced into the sun. And we'll take some glamour shots. Photo mode. Turn this off. As always, it's going to lag out on me. So you can see these engines barely fit. Like, see this little gap right here? When these uh, gears are rotated, there's just a little bit of a gap right there. But it was, like I said, it was enough to where uh, it didn't affect anything. And uh, we'll, we'll go, you know, we're going to go with it. <coughs> this is the ship. This is the glamour shot. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, it's something different. You know, I'm uh, always looking for different ideas. You know, because it's easy to get stuck in building the same type of ship over and over and I think I've been going down that route for a while now honestly I'm kinda of, I've run out of ideas a long time ago that's why I'm on reddit on the uh, Starfield ships builds all the time just looking for inspiration on you know, my next build and uh, this is what I came up with but anyways uh, I hope you guys liked the video and I'll chat with you all later